Hello friends, Chris Corsi here, president of Thrive Today. One of the things we try to do at Thrive Today is provide resources where you can learn and practice relational skills. So there's 19 specific skills that we train during our Thrive training. One of the skills that we focus on is how do I stay my relational self while I feel a negative emotion? You see, our brain has to learn at an early age, how do I manage and regulate what I feel while also staying relational? When I don't have this particular skill, then I act like a different person when I'm in a specific negative emotion. There's nothing fun about that. So what I'm going to tell today is a fear story, a time that I was feeling afraid and how I, I tried to stay my relational self. So my friend James came up for a visit one summer, and one of the things we like to do here in Western Michigan is go to the beach. So I decided to take my friend James to the beach with my two sons. And we just set up at the beach, got our chairs up, the towels out on the sand, and my sons ran about 15 feet ahead of us to go build a sand castle and play in the water. And I noticed as I sat down in my chair, I heard some very loud, obnoxious music um, getting closer. So I turned around and I saw a man not far from us who was just going to set up his spot pretty close to us. And he was um, playing very loud death metal. And I could then soon smell some of what he was smoking. And I just noticed enough that this is interesting. I didn't think a lot of it. Um, but I monitored the man because over time I started noticing he was behaving very erratically. And my concerns went to a whole new level when I saw him pull out a hunting knife and start sharpening his hunting knife while he's singing death metal and still smoking what I could smell. Now I thought that was very um, alarming. Who brings a hunting knife to the beach? So I noticed my body grew tense, my shoulders were tense, my breathing became shallow, and um, it was, it's like me when I feel afraid to take some deep breaths and stay my relational self. So I started interacting with my friend James. I said, look, I don't trust this guy. He's behaving erratically. Who brings a hunting knife to the beach? So I said, James, why don't you go um, stay by the boys, kind of be a buffer. He's a good friend. He'll be a buffer between this guy and the boys, and I don't know what's going to happen. So I talked to the people who were sitting behind me and I said, look, this guy's behaving erratically over there. Um, he has now pulled out a hunting knife. Now, the, as soon as I was um, talking to these people and trying to raise their awareness of what was going on, he pulled out a hatchet. So he put down the hunting knife and he pulled out a hatchet. Then he started to practice swinging uh, his hatchet and sharpening his hatchet while he's still singing death metal and still smoking the same stuff that I'm smelling. So at this point, I'm very, very concerned so talking to the people who were nearby this family we decided to call security and get security down here because this is this is making us feel very uncomfortable unfortunately the security office never picked up the phone so one of the fellows in this group decided he's going to go walk over to where the security station is and try to get some help this was not a close walk so we knew it'd be a while in the meantime i continued to monitor this man who's still practicing swinging his hatchet and singing and smoking and I'm praying to Jesus at this point, saying, Lord, I don't know what's going on here. I just pray for your protection. And give me wisdom. We just pray that you disarm this so, so nothing crazy will happen. And I'm still monitoring my sons. Thankfully, James was over there keeping an eye on them. So I had to take some deep breaths. And I'm very eager to, for security to come. And it's like me when I'm afraid to not only stay relational and try to be calm, but also try to be creative in finding resources to navigate a situation. Unfortunately, uh, security came, but they couldn't do anything because the guy wasn't doing anything wrong. Um, it wasn't illegal to smoke what he was smoking in Michigan, and it wasn't necessarily illegal to bring those tools and utensils to the beach. So we just interacted with them briefly and said, well, we're just concerned about his behavior. Um, yeah, there, this, isn't, this isn't comforting. So eventually security leaves, and this guy's still kind of doing his thing. Um, so another man in this other family says, I'm going to call the police because this is crazy. So he called the police. In the meanwhile, I'm noticing like other mothers with their young children coming over and setting up their little beach spot pretty close to this man. So I walk over there to these other families who are, who are setting up si their site right there, saying this isn't a good idea. This guy's acting erratically. He has a hunting knife and a hatchet. I'm just... I'm not comfortable with, you know, what's going on. And they quickly agreed with me and 
had no problems moving their, um, moving their site to another part of the beach. So this whole time I'm staying relational, I'm talking to Jesus, I'm rem rem trying to remember to breathe, and I'm just trying to be creative in this situation. And so thankfully, about the time that I saw the police finally arrive, this is like 45 minutes later, um, they pull up in the parking lot, I see this. I did, I'd interact with James, I said, okay, police are here, I'm fried. Like, I, why don't we go home and maybe we'll come back to the beach another time, but this is more fun in one day than I uh, can handle. So James wholeheartedly agreed. We start packing up our stuff and walking back to the parking lot as the police are starting to walk up. And what was interesting is this man also started to leave when we were leaving. So that was odd. But nonetheless, I was glad to see the police. And we, at this point, could see that the situation was being dis disarmed and the police were interacting with him, hopefully getting him whatever help he needed, as well as disarming any potential problems on the beach that day. So in retrospect, this is a really good example story because I was very genuinely, authentically feeling some fear. I did not know what this guy was going to do, and especially when I had my children with me. That's a whole other dynamic. But I stayed relational. I tried to stay calm. I continued to interact with Jesus. So if you've been tracking with my story, one of the things you should see if this is a good acting like myself story is I'm showing um, what I'm feeling with my face and you can hear it in my voice. There's authentic fear. I'm hopefully not laughing or smiling when I'm saying how afraid I am. Oh no, I'm hopefully you can see it with my eyes, my voice, my face. Um, hopefully you can also see that I'm trying to look, have eye contact here with the, obviously this is a camera, but I'm trying to maintain eye contact as I'm telling the story. And I'm trying to use feeling words to describe what I'm uh, feeling as well. So I might say I'm feeling some fear, I'm feeling stiff. So feeling words help to say, hey, here's what's going on here. You can gauge what I'm feeling. Another thing we want to look for is um, including some body sensation. So what are some feeling words for body sensation? So I'm feeling tension in my shoulders. Um, I'm feeling, you know, I'm breathing, shallow breathing in my lungs. So I'm, what's, here's what's happening in my body. My body is a canvas for my brain. And so I want to include some of what it's like to be in my shoes. And I want to use a story that's autobiographical, which means I'm involved in the story. Here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm doing. Here's what I'm feeling. So I'm telling this from my perspective. And I want to aim to keep the story concise. So we're aiming under five minutes for a story, which actually five is a little longer. Um, ideally, two to three minute stories are the best. But as long as I'm under around the five minute range, that's, that's acceptable. Too many details just means that you lose some of the training value in your story. Now, as, as I look back on that story, this was very interesting for me because I just, um, just days earlier, I just agreed to start helping a local ministry working with um, victims uh, coming out of satanic ritual abuse. So I have done this type of ministry for 25 years. I just agreed to help a local ministry with that. So I found that was the timing of this was really interesting from that perspective. But I don't, I don't know why. I'm not going to overthink it. I just know that thankfully, I'm thankful that God was faithful. Uh, he he it diffused anything. There wasn't um, a situation that needed to be uh, disarmed. Nobody got hurt. And I was thankful to have other people that I can interact with. And pr pray, to pray for this man to get the help that he needs for whatever's going on in his life. As Christians, that's a good thing for us to do. So friends, thank you for listening. Um, learn more at thrivetoday.org on resources to enhance and strengthen your relational skills.